Beautiful morning, and what better way to start the day than to serve interesting content on housing and construction in Nigeria and beyond? As always, I am Fleur Annie, your housing diva. Despite the enormity of the housing challenges facing Nigeria, there is a lot that suggests Nigerians can only turn the tide around, close the housing deficit gap, and steadily provide for the country's need. This clearly suggests that the government alone cannot address the challenges and that only a collaboration between the government and the private sector players will be adequate. On the program today, we shall be looking at how public-private partnership will impact housing provision in Nigeria. Also, the rising cost of house rent will also be looked into on Voices on the Street. These and many more will be coming your way right after the news making rounds in the housing sector. I will be back. The Housing Development Advocacy Network, HDAN, has pledged its support to the new leadership of the Real Estate Developers Association of Nigeria, REDAN, to elevate the standards of the real estate sector in Nigeria. The Executive Director of HDAN, Festus Adebayo, made this known in a statement released in Abuja recently. Adebayo emphasized the importance of professionalism, credibility and discipline within REDAN urging the president, Akintoye Adeoye, to prioritize these qualities in steering the association forward. Persistently, higher interest rates continue to pose a challenge for the real estate market, notably impacting commercial properties by increasing borrowing costs and reducing demand from developers and investors. The escalation, undeniably, has worsened the nation's housing crisis prompting investors to take a more cautious stance, particularly in light of the ongoing rise in building materials prices due to inflation in the country. Between 2007 and 2024, the interest rates averaged 11.89%, hitting an unprecedented peak of 22.75% in February 2024, an historic low of 6% in July 2009. The Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, raised its key benchmark interest rate by 400 BPS to 22.75% on February 27, 2024, marking a new record high since at least 2007 and above forecasts of 21%. Stakeholders in the housing sector have advocated for a review of the 2024 housing budget to meet up with current realities. During an exclusive interview with journalists, the Executive Secretary of the Association of Housing Corporation of Nigeria emphasized that the review of the 2024 budget projection was unavoidable. He stated that between January and now, Numerous changes have occurred in the economy, adding that the exchange rate has exceeded all projections made at the start of the year as a budget preparation parameter. He further noted that the sudden surge in the exchange rate, surpassing the initial budget figure alongside inflation and sharp increases in commodity prices due to foreign exchange market instability, has undermined all established parameters.
Housing News, do well to visit www.africanhousingnews.com. Now more than ever, national and sub-national governments must collaborate and enable the private sector to participate adequately to provide housing for Nigerians. In line with the affirmation, these experts have provided details on how public-private partnership can impart housing provision in Nigeria. Let's take a listen. Nigeria is one nation that continues to experience rise in population growth, especially in her urban centers. These and the combination of an inefficient mortgage system, poverty, increasing construction costs, land acquisition and processing, high inflation, and declining household income have made access to decent and affordable housing difficult for many Nigerians. For some experts, the adoption of public-private partnership PPP in housing provision in Nigeria is the way to go, as this will help increase urban housing stock and address housing affordability and accessibility challenges. However, not so many are aware of the benefits therein. For Professor Charles Inyangete, Chief Executive Officer at Innovative Rigs and Investment Solutions Limited, public-private partnership has helped in the ease of land allocation while also pointing out the need for active follow-up in ensuring the land is affordable and well-situated for use. One area that PPP has been put into use is in, in land and, and sharing land between private developers and, and the public sector, which let's say government or state governments. And that still needs to be strengthened, it needs to be improved, because it's not sufficient just to allocate land. You also have to follow through the whole processes relating to making it affordable. Give the land in a good location. Be ready to give the approvals you know, in a rapid manner because at the end of the day, you are part of that partnership. No point giving the land and when it comes to gain approvals, it's taking months and months and even years. Simplify the processes for, for private developers who want to come in so they understand what your processes are as a state. So, and also, you don't need to collect stamp duty at the levels that they are. And the private sector should be also more transparent in the way it deals with the public sector. So it works two ways. Speaking on how public-private partnership can be effective, engineer Nicholas Ogbedu, CEO Zefkan Groups, says profit-making shouldn't be the priority of PPP, but each party must ensure that they carry out due diligence in fulfilling their obligation. Now the PPP shouldn't be all about profits. Ability to what? Bring in different ideas. Interministerial meeting. The Ministry of Works, do the road, do the lights. Don't promise what you cannot do. FCDA, provide the land, give approval, give a CFO for the land so that a developer will do those bidding for 10 million or 6 million. Now, Ministry of Rural Electrification Agency, give power infrastructure to those estates. Because these are civil servants or people who are contributing to NHF have served for 35 years. What is wrong in giving them road, light and water? He urged government to engage private professionals who are willing and ensure policies are not just formulated, but implemented and sustained. Government is all about programs, but policy formulation, do you understand? When you formulate policy, being able to what? Implement. Implementation is not there. And continuity. Now, I take, for instance, the FISH program, the Federal Integrated Staff Housing Program for the Office of the Head of Service. It failed because they are not listening to the private individuals. Hi, I'm Bob Weinsheng, CEO of Ibel Global. Keep watching the Housing Development Program. Welcome back. The program is housing development. To boost private sector participation, the government must provide an enabling environment through incentives such as tax concessions and the elimination of bureaucratic bottlenecks in the land administration system. Mortgage reforms and efficient credit systems are equally required to maximize investment in the sector. Let's listen to these experts as a professor solutions on how we can encourage more public-private partnership in housing development. Take a listen. 
I think the problem in Nigeria is we don't understand what public-private partnership, public-private partnership means. It's not taking something free so you can make money. It is taking an asset and investing in it and using it to create wealth. So when you talk about public-private partnerships, it has to be something that grows the pie, not something that steals the pie. The way we do it in Nigeria is that you literally have a few people stealing the pie and then the vast majority of us are struggling. That doesn't work. So in that, in that, in that um, uh, way, I don't believe in the way we do it in Nigeria. But done properly, PPPs are the only way that you can catalyze the sector. So as a company, we are huge believers in public-private partnerships. Uh, we are currently running 17 projects. Of those projects, I think about four of them are actually public-private partnerships. We're in partnership with Lagos State for, on two projects, with LSPDC and with Ministry of Housing. We have a development here that we are doing with Kano State Government as well, through the Housing Board and the Pensions. So it's something we also have partnered up with Kaduna State on a market, re-renovation and um, redevelopment. We are also have worked in the past with Niger State. So we really believe that actually PPPs are a really good way to, um, I think, expand very quickly uh, when it comes to housing provision. Government has a huge role to play in PPPs. I mean, the first P is public. And uh, we know that government policies uh, have um, a big say in how these things are done. Uh, most of the things uh, that were said today are very important, like land acquisition, to make it easy for people to have access to good land in places that there's infrastructure. And if there's no infrastructure, that government provides the infrastructure. So the cost of infrastructure is not borne by the cost of the house. If the developer provides infrastructure, he will transfer that cost in the price of the house. And that makes the house unaffordable for the people that it's intended for. So we expect also government policies in um, trade and tariff, so uh, we're talking of uh, duties, you know, on a lot of things that we import uh, for housing, you know, to remove or reduce duties on those items so that in turn we transfer these savings uh, to people. You know, uh, we also want to see more synergy between the uh, federal government uh, agencies such as uh, Family Home Funds, Federal Mortgage Bank, Infra Credit, Family Home Funds, you know, those agencies that are charged with housing delivery, you know, to be able to have a synergy to, for us to have a one housing policy that has been driven, you know, all of us working towards one goal, which is providing affordable housing. We don't have road. And you see, at times, if it is raining, you will see a lot of people will go by the roadside. They will be thrown dead on the main road. We also don't have toilet. You will see a toilet, you will still have to 30 uh, uh, tenants. They are using one. You can't leave your door open, go and buy something. Before you will know, Babambola will enter. By the time you will take them to police station, one hour is too much, the police people will, uh, uh, will, will release them. In fact, we don't know what is happening. This is the situation with many citizens in not just Nigeria. Are we ready for this conversation? What is the plight of an average Nigerian citizen in regards to housing? Housing is a fundamental human right and these issues must be addressed. Debbie Herb. I work for OPIC in the United States and uh, keep watching the Affordable Housing Development Program. You're watching housing development. On incremental basis, cost of living crisis in Nigeria is escalating and in more ways than one, it is impacting on health finances and access to basic needs of individuals, organizations and families. Most affected are individuals and households living in rented accommodation who are now groaning under the weight of rent increases, especially in city suburbs where tenants are contending with over 50% rise in the past one year. What as Nigerians share their thoughts and experience on the rising cost of rent on Voices on the Street. Uh, these days, they, they capitalize on this uh, economic issue, this economic uh, uh, this, uh, that is going on. That is where they capitalize. They, they, they influence the price of rent. 
You understand? Not, not, it is not now they build the house. But they too also, they, they have something to do with money. That is why you see them, they, they escalate the price of rent, house rent. It's becoming increasingly difficult for um, people who pay these rents. Like myself, I have, I'm, I'm staying in a rented apartment and I also have an office. Boots increase the rent by 100%. Boots landlords. Uh -huh. So you can't, uh, move. even negotiation serve, there is no room for negotiation. It's either you pay the increased rent or you move out. Men should do something because what what we are passing through now is, is getting out of hand. See, the, the issue of house rent, like the area I'm staying now, you can't get, is in the village, you can't get a house of 300,000. The place that we were paying 150,000 is now 400, 500. So people are crying a lot. Some people are moving to village. And moving to village is not even helping issue because nobody has anything in that village. So please, we are, ask, we are begging a government to do something about it. When everything is high, to build house is high. The length is still high because of the building materials area make the land get high. Everything is high for a poor man to live. It's just by grace of God. Either we pack out or we stay. We should pay that things are cost. Things are cost. And you know that those people, they are, they are struggling before they eat. You are increasing house rent for them. Either they leave, they stay, or they leave. It's not, it's not. And another person ready to enter. The rent is not, I will not say it's their fault, 100%. Because the rate at which um, everything now is rising, food is increasing, everybody. So everybody needs a means of surviving. And the, the reason why most of them increase rent, maybe when they renovate the house, like maybe there's no water and they fix for all, they make it comfortable. So it's them increasing it for the comfort of the of the um, tenant and for their own gain also. So it's equal, 50-50. Voices on the street then moving on. Internally displaced persons residing at the water camp in Abuja have decried the poor condition of the camp, blaming the situation and government neglect of the camp. The common complaint of IDPs in different states across the country is that they have been abandoned by the federal and state government. The situation is not different at the Wasa IDPs camp, which is one of the many IDPs camps established in different parts of the FCT, located behind Apo village just after Waru and Kabusa. Housing development crew paid a visit to the camp. Here is our findings. Have a look. The Wasa IDP camp is one of the resettlement camps established in the Federal Capital Territory with over 5,000 internally displaced persons. The IDP camps in Wasa in the Federal Capital Territory, FCT, is another tale of displaced Nigerians suffering from different forms of neglect, including lack of portable water, toilet and schools. A major complaint of IDPs in different states across the country is that they have been abandoned by the federal and state governments. This situation is not different at the Wasa IDPs camp, which is one of the many IDPs camps established in different parts of the FCT. Speaking to Housing TV Africa, the chairman of Wasa IDPs, Jeffrey Beatrice, lamented that the living condition in the camp has been on steady decline for years, with various governments showing little or no concern. He raised concerns that the current economic situation in the country had made living unbearable for residents in the camp. We are jobless here. Honestly, if there is a way government can help us, we will appreciate it. We came here, we made this, this uh, government resettlement estate in Uasa. 
So we have been here since 2014. We are living in this house. Uh, and up to now, our place is not a uh, no peace day up to now. So we can't go back. If that is so, government can help us to provide houses to us, we would appreciate it. Okay. Other residents in the camp took their turns to voice out their opinions to Housing TV Africa, lamenting the living conditions in the area and how difficult it had become to live under such conditions. Our camp, truly we are living in peace here. The major problem, the, ch the challenges of life right now. We are facing a lot of challenges. You know, everything go high. And also we don't have anything to, to buy something in the market. Some of uh, our people, like elderly people, they are not working. They are facing a lot of challenge, but any feeding. Still we are living in these uh, abundant houses. We are living in these abundant houses, and also sometimes FCDA people they are coming to disturb us. They want to reverse the house and let us get inside the houses. I want to government Makaranta secondary school Mayara. Ma in rich life in the other serious. Wa as a bit in the Zam Yamujum, you don't bam the in the Zam Yamuj as a bit at King Gareth Carfimo. Come in the Mickey Zama. Do Muna to Nanisha so say a come, Sabida. To Nan the Mickey when you look at she. Anna Zua, a chairman, Anna Sumana Moji. Mabamu de inda zamu ya mujie muna anang hali ya kusani shakara guma To se muna agani inda mujie wani wajwa mazee kama na wani sabora iwani To shini muna ni mongomit ya tema kama na damu hali inda zamu zona Further exposing the glaring state of the living conditions in the area The issue of hygiene and nutrition stands tall among the challenges being faced in the camp <laughs> A first-hand assessment shows that residents are suffering from different forms of neglect, including lack of portable water, toilet, dilapidated houses and schools. Considering the plight of the residents in the area, urgent government intervention is needed to solve the escalating issues of living conditions in the area. Hello, my name is Casey Arrest. I'm the Executive Director of the Center for Affordable Housing Finance in Africa. We're based in Johannesburg, South Africa. Please keep watching Housing Development Program. It's a great show. We do hope the relevant authorities are watching and will come to the aid of the internally displaced persons residing in our water camp. The program is housing development. I will be back after the break. Good to know you're still tuned in. The 18th African International Housing Show, a unique one-stop event for construction industry stakeholders, real estate developers, 
furniture companies, home decor and technology manufacturers, as well as suppliers, building material manufacturers, as well as suppliers, is slated to hold from the 22nd to the 25th of July 2024. Africa International Housing Show is the largest housing and construction exhibition and conference in Africa planned to be there. Now here are testimonials from exhibitors that attended the last Africa International Housing Show. Um, yes, I must say it has been great because a lot of people have worked up for partnership, a lot of people have worked up for uh, questions, a lot of people have worked up because they want to get land or houses from us and they'll be like, oh, property vault, we've not seen you guys before. So I believe this is a very good platform because we've been, we are now out in the market. A lot of people that don't know us know us right now because this is a place where thousands of people since yesterday we've been collecting contacts people have been walking up to our stand and i must say it has been very great we have like um, around 130 leads and um, contacts that we'll talk to and we hopefully they will generate a lead so i can say it's been a fruitful outing it's been a wonderful time to network to talk to companies to talk to brands to talk to individuals we've gotten a few people that we've already sent quotations to and we're looking forward to doing business with so we are sure it's a good it's going to be a good Time. We are meeting uh, some people. Uh, they wanna, they wanna be a partner with us. Uh, we are discuss uh, for business. I think we will, we will find good partners here. We came for that. A man who has a roof over his head tends to be more productive and that is why Housing for All is advocacy on this program. Glad you had a great time. Let's do this again next week. Until then, our Mayor Housing Diva, Fleur Annie. Enjoy the rest of your day.